Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Geico 15-Minute Moto Show. I'm your host, Ralph Sheen. Hey, you ever find yourself going down the road and got your hands on the bars and you can't really take them off to tap, but maybe you're just tapping along with your thumbs as you're kind of humming a song in your head? Well, our next guest does that a lot when he rides, I'm sure, because he's one of the best drummers in rock and roll. Rob Hammersmith joins us, drummer for Skid Row. Rob, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Do you do that? Do you ride down the road and you tap it a little bit? You know, I, I probably do, but I make an effort to not take uh, not take time to practice while I'm riding. So, so if I catch myself doing it, uh, it's it's usually on accident. So. Well, and you don't want to take your hands off the bars. We don't want to encourage that, that's for sure. Yeah, I really don't. Yeah, yeah not if I can help it. <laughs> so what, what do you ride? So I've got, uh, at the moment, I've got two bikes and I've got, uh, I've got a great, great story behind an old vintage Honda. I've got a 1975 CB400F and I absolutely, I fell in love with this bike a handful of years ago. It was not initially the bike I was after. I was looking for uh, a 73 and like a lot of riders, I was looking for either a 550 or a 750. Those seem to be the most popular bikes in Honda's line from that era. Yeah, And I stumbled across this bike, and like most bikes from that era, she needed a ton of love, she needed a lot of work, and I just decided that I was all in, and I was willing to put the time into it, and obviously I've had help throughout the years, uh, so this particular bike has been a labor of love of mine for the last handful of years. Uh, I refer to her as my moody girlfriend most most days, she, she's everything you would expect her to be, uh, you know, it's a... Yeah, for, with a bike of that age, you know, some days go better than others, but uh, <laughs> but I absolutely, absolutely love riding that bike. Uh, but it's been a long process, a long, a long process getting it to where it is today. Now, did you restore that to classic trim or is it a cafe racer? What'd you do to it? So uh, it's, it's more to the side of a cafe racer or what they call a brat build. So yeah. my vision for that particular bike was to strip off as much as I possibly could and get the bike to be about as bare bones as I could possibly get it. So, so that was kind of the, that was the vision from the beginning. And then from there, you start to, to figure out what's going to actually work, what's not going to work. And there are, there are a lot of tabs on the frame that you think you'll never miss. And then when you look at it and you realize they actually do serve a purpose and you may want to keep that on there, so it's been a it's been a little bit of a compromise, uh, but to answer your question, it is about as stripped down and basic as I can possibly get it. Uh, there's just enough there to talk myself out of a ticket if I ever need to do that, but uh, <laughs> but she's pretty basic. Now you mentioned two bikes. What's the other one? So right now I've got one of the new Harley Davidson, uh, the 2021 Lowrider S, the 114 Softail 114, and another bike that I just absolutely love. It's not a you know, by today's standards, it's not a massive bike, but it fits all of my my needs, my riding style. It's enough to get out on the longer rides. I can do the the longer getaways, and I'm not out there on a on a very small vintage bike, so I can do the longer range group rides and things like that. So that's what I'm riding these days. How, how do you balance riding and touring and recording and all of that? You know, it's that's a really good question. I it's because I enjoy riding so much, it's, I say an escape, but I don't really know. I, I obviously I enjoy playing drums and recording and traveling with the band and doing those things. So it's not that I'm trying to escape from, from my daily life or my normal routine, but it's, it's really easy for me to come home. We'll, we'll do a run of shows and, and, you know, you're kind of, you're forced to be around people all day long. And that's not a bad thing. We, we all get along very well in our organization. But when you're forced to travel with people and perhaps you're in a van or on a bus or, or whatever it is you're doing, riding for me is a really, really good opportunity to disappear. I'm alone with my thoughts. I go out and I'll ride for a handful of hours. And it's a really nice way for me to unplug and decompress and just be alone with my thoughts and my, my uh, which is not always a good thing, I guess, for me to be, uh, be alone with my thoughts for too long. <laughs> but I... Uh, as far as finding the balance, it's really natural for me. It, it comes pretty easy. Now, like everybody else, there are, there are phases where I don't have enough time to ride and, and I start to really miss it. And, and you know, the, the desire to do it is always there, but it seems to always find its own balance for me. So Skid Row tours all around the world still to this day. Um, 
do you, do you have you ever had opportunities when you're in a far away place to on a day off maybe rent a bike and go for a ride? You know, it's that's a great question. I have had a couple of missed opportunities recently. Uh, I have actually reached out to some bike builders around the world, and I have gone to shops and visited and spoken with bike builders, and I have yet to actually find the opportunity to get out and and ride. Uh, so that's something that I'm making a priority as the band moves forward. Uh, there are a couple guys in our organization, our our sound engineer, he also rides, and we've discussed possibly going out and, and doing some longer range rides while we're while we're traveling. So to answer your question, it's something I've always thought about it. I, I've just yet to actually follow through and pull the trigger. So, so, yeah, I'll, so I'll follow up with you in a couple of months and, and yeah, hold me to it. Yeah, I look forward to hearing that because Neil Peart, of course, was legendary. The, the, That's right. The, the legend himself, the drummer for Rush, he would ding the bike with him on the road. And instead of being on the bus, he'd just follow along on a bike You're and wrote right. books about it and everything else. So, I mean, yeah. there's a way to do this. Well, if he can do that, there's really no excuse for me finding That's a day right. or two here and there. Yeah. yeah. Is, is there one place that maybe you've been that you say, you know, if I double back there, I got to ride there? That's a great question. We, a handful of years ago, we played a show in Malmo, Sweden. And if you have any viewers from, from that particular area, I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly. So I apologize. <laughs> We had a show the following day in Norway, and we were told that we would ride overnight through the mountains. And when we woke up on the bus early the next morning, the views and the scenery, I was not prepared for, for what I was experiencing. I had been told that it was a very scenic route and a very, a very, uh, a very pretty ride but I was not prepared for some of the most amazing scenery that I've ever seen in my entire life. So that is definitely a bucket list, a bucket list route for me, if I ever have the means to do that. And even if it's just a fraction of what we saw that day, I would love to do something like that. And you're talking about mountain vistas with snow-capped mountains and waterfalls and, oh, and just, yeah, I mean, it is just a, it's an amazing part of the world that a lot of people will probably never have the opportunity to see. So I'm very fortunate. Yeah. How much does motorcycling help you with your music? Does it, do you come up with material and songs and, and drum riffs when you're, uh, when you're riding or do you just escape from everything? You know, it's sometimes it's an escape and other times I, I do catch myself working things out in my head. Maybe I'll be humming along a, a particular song. Maybe I'm, I'm trying to internalize the arrangement for a song and I will find myself humming along. Uh, I think that in a lot of ways, the act of writing to me is very similar to playing drums. So there's a lot of focus required. There are, there are physical mechanics that are involved. And it's an outlet for me to train my brain to be hyper-focused on small, small movements and a sequence of movements. And I'm, I'm one of those riders who, who always grades my ride. So I may go out for a 10 minute ride and, and I'll come home and and I'll just take a couple minutes and think to myself, wow, that was that was a really smooth ride. Everything felt really comfortable. Everything felt really natural. And then, as you know, as a rider yourself, other days you go out and, and maybe maybe the light turns green and you're a little clunky off the start and, and you're just somewhat distracted mentally. And and I find that drumming is very similar. It's all a series of of what seems like minor mechanical things that work together. And riding is very similar for me. So I feel like I'm almost in the, in the same headspace when I ride my motorcycles, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, well, so there's, a, there's like a beat to riding ready. too in the engine sound, right? Especially on a Harley, there's a rhythm to the exhaust and, and you feed off of that as a rider. So do Absolutely. you feed off of that as a drummer? I do, yeah. Yeah, I definitely, you, you're, you're, you're correct. There's there's a very visceral, I guess, element to it, and and you're responding to things that your body hears and and that your body feels, the vibrations, the sound, the the things that become second nature. They're happening, but you don't even realize that they're happening. All those things are very much the same to me mentally. Okay, so as you think about Skid Row songs, what's the best Skid Row song to ride a motorcycle to? 
Oh gosh. Well, it would probably be slave to the grind. Although that was the one I was going to say. That's the, that's the one that's going to get you the ticket, right? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. But that's probably why it's the best. Uh, I mean, you've gone wild. Of course, if we're being honest, that's, that's usually nine out of 10 times. That's why somebody gets into riding motorcycles because of the rebellious aspect to it. That's kind of what draws you in. Yeah. Uh, but slave to the ground would probably have to be my, my, uh, my go-to uh if i'm going to listen to music in the bluetooth i probably shouldn't listen to that one that's probably a guaranteed ticket so. well listen it's my favorite skid row song no matter what you're doing right if i'm trying to relax or trying to get up slave to the grind is this going to get me there that's, um, yeah so i've i've asked other musicians this question have you heard or has the the ultimate motorcycle song been written yet and if so do you think you know what it is well i would that's a really good question. I, I imagine the obvious answer is born to be wild. Uh, but you know what? I, I like to think that it hasn't been written yet. Uh, you know, that, I don't know. We're always trying to top what's been done in the past, right? Whether we're a musician or an actor or, or a bike builder, we're always trying to, to push the envelope and move things forward. I, I don't know. Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, I, I like to think that it hasn't been written yet, but there's been some great ones written in the past. So, okay, so maybe you got to get together with Scotty and Snake and give them, you know, some encouragement on how to do this, and give it Rachel and you, I guess Rachel and Snake write a lot of the songs. So they do, yeah. Maybe maybe you guys maybe you guys have one up your sleeve somewhere. I hope so. Yeah, that'll be <laughs> another one. Check back with me in a few months, and we'll uh, we'll check in with you. So we've talked a little bit about what you want to do, you know, as far as riding places you'd like to ride. Is there a motorcycle out there that you dream of owning or, or trying someday? You know, as far as owning, Triumph Trophy, and you'll know why I say this, because, because of the Fonz, because I, I grew yeah. up in that, in that time period and, and watching and whether it's superficial for some people or it's it's deeper than that for others he was a figurehead for motorcycle culture in that time period now i don't know if that's the right bike for me i don't know if it's the best bike for me at this point in my life but it's just always been on my bucket list and specifically that time period even a, a 1949 triumph trophy or something like that i just at some point in my life, I would like to experience it. And that yeah. just, I think that would be the ultimate way to take me back to my childhood and very, very vivid memories. I got to tell you, it's a unique one. I've never heard that before. But okay. the one thing you don't want to do with it is jump the shark, right? You're exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, you're exactly <laughs> you, right. I think, I'll, like uh, a... I think those days are behind me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you ever think about racing? Cause you've been riding for a while. Have, have you ever thought about riding and racing? You know what? I no. to answer your question. I, I guess, I guess everybody thinks about it from time to time, but when I think about it, I, I just don't know if I'm, if I'm wired to be, to be that type of rider. And, and I really have a huge appreciation for, for what it takes, the the ability to to see the lines and react in in that type of time frame and, and all the elements that make a good good racer, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm cut out for that, to be honest with you. So so no, if I do ever have those thoughts, they're they're usually few and far between, and and they're very they're very split second and not serious thoughts about doing that. Yeah, well, I know you love it because you've come and hung out with us at. Supercross in the past and things like That's that. Right. So I, yeah. I know you enjoy it. Uh, yeah. You know, the rock music business has changed quite a bit. It's it's not all the crazy party that it once was. It's a lot more corporate and business and sure. uh, an industry for the bands these days. Do you find yourself when you're hanging out backstage or on the road with other groups, do you find other guys in the music industry that are big motorcycle fans? Absolutely. Yeah. So this, this is an activity like a lot of activities when you start to put it out, whether it's through social media or just in conversations and talking to people, you start to find people in your orbit or people around you who are also also uh, into the same the same sport or activity. Uh, so we, I have a handful of buddies in our in our scene. Robert Mason, who's the, the singer for Warren, the band Warren, 
he's a big rider. He's a, he's been riding for years as well. And he and I, that's another uh, example of, of he and I have threatened to find a day off somewhere and actually get together and, and take a ride. And we just haven't had the opportunity to do it. Uh, so yeah, I do find that there are a lot of guys and, and a lot of musicians and a lot of people in our industry who are riders and it's, it's fun. It's great. It's, it's nice to be in that environment and find something that you can bond with somebody and maybe, maybe change your scenery up a little bit and talk about yeah. something that isn't related to music or travel or something like that. Well, speaking of making music, Skid Row is doing a ton of that still to this day and cranking out new music. In fact, you're doing it right now, getting ready to unveil some new music to everybody. What's, what's coming with Skid Row and, and where can the fans see you guys in, in the coming year or so? Yeah, so, so as th this is probably stating the obvious, but, but as things are slowly ramping back up, we have been playing shows this year. We have been focused on finishing this album and we've been working on this record for, for a little bit longer than we would have liked for it to have taken, but we wanted to take our time. We wanted to do things at a pace that was comfortable for us and right for us. And we had some logistical issues over the last 18 months as has everybody. Sure. Uh, so next year we will be busy touring. Uh, you'll ask me specific dates and locations. And, and unfortunately I don't know as of yet, uh, but we are looking at uh, a May 2022 uh, release date. So right around that time frame, that's what we're looking at. And uh, we're excited. We're excited for things to slowly start ramping up for us again and, and, uh, and get back out there and do what we love doing. Great. Of course, that means new music means more music in the iPod as you're riding down the road, right? That's exactly it. Yeah. If I need to play these, uh, these songs at the shows, I'm going to need to go riding and work them out in my head. There you go. Hey, Rob, yeah. thanks for joining us today. Can't wait to see you guys out on the road and hear Slave to the Grind live again. Folks, My thanks pleasure. for tuning in as always here on the Geico 15-Minute Moto Show. I'm Ralph Shaheen. We'll have a new episode for you every week right here on Speed Sports. <laughs>